Grandma again. Are you ready for another story with Grandma's story time? We're reading The Adventures of the Wishing Chair by Enid Blyton. And we're up to chapter 22. Put on your glasses, Grandma. It's all been very exciting. They're trying to get Chinky out of the tower from Wizard Clip Clap. And they went to see Dimple and she gave them two magic tablets, red and green, and they went little. They're about to go down the mouse hole. Let's find out. It's called The Strange Tower. The hole was dark and smelt a bit funny. Molly clung tightly to Peter's hand. It was strange being so small. Harriet the mouse went on in front and they could see her little gleaming eyes as she turned round every now and again to check they were coming. Once Peter trod on her tail and she gave an angry squeal. So sorry, said Peter. I keep forgetting you have such a long tail, Harriet. At last they came to a place where the tunnel widened out into a room. It was very warm there. A large mouse pounced on Harriet and gave her a hug. Oh, Auntie, you're home, said Harriet. See, I brought two children. They wanted to get into the tower, so I thought they may as well use our mouse tunnel. It's the only way in. Good afternoon, said Harriet's aunt. She seemed just an ordinary mouse, except that she wore large spectacles. Her home was chiefly made of paper, it seemed. There were hundreds of little bits into it, neatly made into beds and tables. What are the children going to do? said Harriet's aunt. We would like to know how to get into the cellars, said Peter. You see, if you show us the way there, we can get into the tower above and perhaps find the friend that we're looking for. Well, come this way then, said the aunt. But look out for the cat, won't you? She sometimes waits about in the cellar and you don't want her to catch you. Because what do cats eat? Mice. She took them down another narrow passage and then the children found themselves walking out of a hole into a damp, dark cellar. Goodbye said the mouse. I'll put a little candle just inside this hole so that you will see it and know your way back, children. I hope you find your friend. Molly took Peter's hand. The cellar was dark. A chink of light came from somewhere to the right. The cellar steps must go up towards that chink of light, said Peter. Come on, walk carefully in case we bump into anything. And look out for the cat. We're very small, you know. They found the steps. They seemed very, very big to the children, now that they were so tiny. And Peter had to help Molly up each one. At last they got to the top. They looked under the door that led to the top of the steps. Beyond was a kitchen. Do you suppose the enchanter is back yet? whispered Molly. No, said Peter. We would have heard that clip clapping noise if he had come back. I think we are safe at the moment, but we must hide at once if we hear him coming. And look out for that cat, Molly. Can we squeeze under the door, do you think? asked Molly. But they couldn't. The crack was not big enough. However, the door was not quite closed, and by pushing it with all their might, the children managed to get it open up just enough to squeeze through. They looked around. They were in a very big kitchen. Well, it seemed big to them because they were so tiny. They couldn't see Chinky anywhere. Come on, said Peter, giving Molly his hand. We'll go into the next room. Suddenly came a voice and a large tabby cat with green eyes came out from behind a chair. Molly felt quite shaky at her knees. 
She knew what a mouse must feel like when it saw a cat. What a giant of an animal it seemed. Don't show it you're frightened, said Peter. It has smelt us, but we don't smell like mice. Stay here a moment, Molly, and I'll go over and stroke what I can reach of it. Oh, Peter, you are brave, said Molly. Peter walked boldly over to the cat and stroked her legs. She seemed very pleased and purred loudly. Peter beckoned Molly. She ran over and she stroked the cat too. It was a friendly creature. It went into the next room, purring to Molly and Peter who followed her. This room was very small and was lit by a candle. No daylight came into the tower, for there were no windows. No one was in this little room either. A dish stood on the floor with some milk in it, and a large round ba basket with a fat cushion stood nearby. This must be the cat's room, said Molly. There's no furniture in it. I do wonder where Chinky is. There were some stairs going upwards from the cat's little room. The children climbed them with great difficulty because they were very small and the steps were very large. Before they got to the top, they heard the sound of crying. <laughs> it was Chinky! He must be very unhappy if he was crying. He hardly ever cried. How Molly and Peter tried to climb those big stairs quickly. At last they reached the top and found themselves before a big open door. They ran in. Chinky was lying on a small bed, crying as if his heart would break. Chinky, Chinky, don't cry. We are here to rescue you, shouted Peter, hoping that Chinky would hear his tiny voice, for he was very small now. Chinky did hear it. He sat up at once with tears still running down his cheeks. He saw Molly and Peter and stared at them in surprise. Chinky! cried Molly running over to him. We've come to see you. Cheer up! We got him through a mouse hole after the elf made us small. How can we save you? Oh, you're good, good friends to come and look for me, said Chinky, drying his eyes. I hate being here. I hate this enchanter. He wants me to do bad spells and I won't. I was afraid I would be here for hundreds of years and never see you again. Tell us how we can get away, said Peter. The only way it seems to be in the mouse hole you came by, said Chinky. So I suppose the only way out is the mouse hole too. But I'm too big to go that way. Well, I'll go back to Dimple's cottage and ask her for a pill to make you small like us, said Peter at once. Then I will bring it back. You can take it and we'll all go down the hole and get Dimple to make us the right size again. Find the wishing chair and go home. See? Hmm, it sounds easy enough, said Chinky, but I don't somehow think it will all go quite as nicely as that. But... Let's try. Leave Molly here with me, Peter, and you go down the mouse hole again. We'll see him safely to the cellar door, said Molly. So they all went down the stairs again and were just going through the cat's little room when Chinky turned pale. The enchanter's coming back, he said. Oh, where can you hide? Quick, quick, think of somewhere, cried Molly. There came the click-clapping noise like thunder as she spoke. The tower split in half and the door came. It opened and in strode the enchanter, tall and thin, his plaited beard sweeping the ground. But before he had seen the two children, Peter had pulled Molly over to the cat's basket. The big cat was lying there comfortably. The children scrambled in and lay down by the cat, hiding in her thick fur. Chinky was left by himself.
I smell children, said the enchanter. How could you get children in your town, master? said Chinky with a look of surprise. The enchanter sniffed and began looking all around the two rooms. The cat did not stir. Clip clap stroked her as he passed and she purred but she stayed in her basket and Molly and Peter cuddled close into her fur hoping that she would not move at all. The enchanter did not think of looking in the cat's basket. He soon gave up the hunt and ran up the stairs calling to Chinky to come with him. Quickly now Peter, whispered Chinky before he followed Clip Clip. Molly can stay with the cat. She's safe there. Quick as could be, Chinky slipped across the floor to the cellar door, squeezed through the small opening and made his way down the steps. He saw the tiny candlelight burning at the entrance to the mouse hole and ran across to it. In he went and made his way up to the mouse room. Harriet, the mouse, was still there talking to her auntie. Please will you take me back to Dimple? asked Peter. It's very important. Harriet gave him her paw and she took him up the hole out into the open air again. Then they hurried together to Dimple's cottage. Soon Peter had told Dimple everything that had happened. She gave him another red and green pill and warned him to be careful not to let Clip Clap see them. And then off went Peter to the mouse hole again. Ah, Chinky would soon be safe. And that's the end of the chapter. Oh, this is so exciting. Come back and we'll find out what happens when Peter goes back down the mouse hole. Bye bye.